What's up YouTube, it's your boy Rhett, back at it again with another video. This video is gonna be a follow up on one of my more popular videos where I show you how to get Chrome extensions into Safari. Problem we had in that video was even after you got the extension into Safari, you'd have to go every time you close Safari, re-allow unsigned extensions, click on the extension again to activate it, and then it would show up. This whole process was very laborious. And for me, it made it not really worth doing. I wasn't gonna switch over to Safari if I had to every single time open it up again and re-allow the extensions. However, in the comments of that video, a hero emerged named Ten Maester Bale, if I'm pronouncing, I don't know, here's his name. So he came up with a fix to this problem. So now we can permanently get our favorite Chrome extensions into Safari. Disclaimer here at the beginning, this for me has worked on about half of the extensions that I've tried it for. I've done six extensions, three of them worked perfectly. One of them, TubeBuddy, it works, but there are some pictures and stuff missing, so it's a little glitchy. And then two of the extensions I tried this on, it didn't work whatsoever. The extensions were totally broken. So just so you're aware of that, this is a tool that Apple released last summer. This is the first year that it's been open to the public and that we've been able to use it to get Chrome extensions into Safari. So there are definitely still bugs and problems with this. So it's not gonna work for every single extension, but it will work for a lot of the popular ones. Additionally, I'm gonna skip over some of the details that we covered in the last video. So if you do get lost at any point watching this video, you feel confused about what I did or you don't know where something came from, go ahead and watch that other video and you should get the details from that video and everything should be cleared up for you. I just wanna save everyone's time and not make basically the same exact video twice. Now that I have wasted enough of your time, smash the like button and let's jump into it. <laughs> All right, so the first thing you're gonna do here is you're gonna come to the CRX extractor link and I'll leave this in the description. You'll go start for free and you'll put the URL of the extension that you wanna get from the Chrome store. So I'm gonna do the Notion Web Clipper. That's what sort of started my interest in all of this. And I'm gonna put this over here. You're gonna download this. You're gonna get the CRX. You're gonna then pull the file back up into here and get the source code. So once you've done that, you'll end up with this notion.zip folder. And once you extract that, you'll get some folder like this and you'll copy the path to that folder that was extracted from your zip file. And you'll open a terminal in this directory. So here we are, we're in a terminal from that exact same code directory and we're going to run sudo xcode select dash s slash application slash xcode. Put in your password, put in your password correctly. And there you go. If this command is giving you any errors or any problems, it could be that you just don't have Xcode installed. That was a problem that people had had in the last video. And then another question that they had in the last video was, can I uninstall Xcode once I've completed this entire process? And the answer to that is yes. So if you're worried about how much memory space in your computer Xcode is taking up, you don't have to worry about that. You can uninstall it when we're done with this whole process. So once you've run that, the next command you're gonna run is XC run slash applications slash Xcode slash contents device developer, user, bin, Safari web extensions converter. So that's the path to your Safari web extension converter tool. Again, you don't have to be an Apple developer to get access to this. This is totally free. So if you were thinking about joining the developer program just to do this, save your $100. You don't need to be part of the developer program for any of this to work. And then next, you're gonna paste in the path to that folder that you had extracted from your zip file. So you just hit paste there. In the description, I'm going to write path to extension here, and hopefully you'll just understand not to actually type out the words path to extension, but to paste the path to the extension folder that you extracted from your zip file. This is my path, so now I'm gonna hit enter, and then I'm gonna type yes. It's gonna give me a little warning here, and I'm gonna select yes to overwrite mine. I've already done this, so it's asking me to overwrite. You will probably not be asked if you wanna overwrite, but I'm gonna hit yes here. And so once you've run that, it should open Xcode for you here. And so then once you're in Xcode, you're just gonna hit play up here in the top left. And you might not be able to see this, but on my screen it said build succeeded. And so if it says build succeeded, you know that you have an extension that you can at least import into Safari. No guarantees that it's going to work exactly how it does in Chrome, but at least you pass the first step there. So what we're going to do next to get it permanently in Safari is up in the Xcode toolbar, you're gonna to click on product up in the top left and you're gonna hit archive. And so that's going to run another little build script here. It should say build succeeded, and then you'll likely only have one here. I've done this a few times now, so I have a few more, but you'll hit distribute app, you'll hit development. This is basically your local development team, which is just you. You'll hit next. You probably won't have an account down here, so you'll hit add account. You'll sign into iCloud. Yours will look something like this, so you'll go down here and click on this little plus sign, and then you'll click on Apple ID, 
you'll fill in your Apple ID. And then when you're done, you can just hit X on this window. Now you should have a development team here. You can click on your development team and hit next. Automatically manage signing, hit next. It's gonna do a little bit of processing there and then you'll hit export. And I'm just gonna save this on my desktop for now. Once you finish that step, you should end up with a folder that looks something like this. What's most important is this .app file here. And you're just gonna to wanna to take that and drag that into your applications folder here. You can double click on your app here and then hit quit and open Safari extension preferences quite a mouthful. And so then here you should see all of your active extensions. You'll see the Notion Web Clipper is checked. Here are some of the extensions that I was having problems with. I couldn't get Moon to work and then I couldn't get vidIQ to work, but I don't know if that's in here either. But basically the problem we were having last time is that if you quit out of Safari and then reloaded Safari, that this extension would be unchecked. And so now if I do a command Q and close Safari and then reopen Safari, when I go back into preferences and I load my extensions, you'll see that Notion Web Clipper is already activated. And you could actually tell automatically just by looking up at the extensions toolbar up at the top, you can see that the Notion Web Clipper icon was there the entire time. And so now if I click on this, I can save this Notion page of dogs to my Notion. And if I open Notion, you'll see that the link came over. I do use Bing because it's better than Google. And now you'll see all these pretty pictures of these dogs and this great glorious Bing link. Smash the like button for Bing. It doesn't get enough credit for being great. So that's it. We got the Chrome extensions permanently in Safari. If you need help running that Safari web extension converter, go ahead and check out that last video. I'll link it up in the cards right here. We go over all of those details in that last video. And then let me know down in the comments, which extensions have you done this for? What are your favorite extensions? Did it work when you did it? Did it not work when you did it? There were a lot of really cool comments of really great extensions in the last video. And so if you leave yours down below, you'll also be able to see maybe if your favorite extension, if someone else did it, if it worked or not. It's gonna save people a lot of time, I think, when they can just scroll down there and check. Like the video if you learned something and subscribe for more tech money and success videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.